Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cass Plays, and welcome to part one of the first generation of my medieval legacy challenge. And if you can hear glee in my voice, it's because I have been wanting to start this challenge for like a few weeks now, maybe a month. I don't know. It feels like it's been forever that I've been waiting, but I didn't want to do it until I would finished my asylum challenge. So here we are. This is my little house. I did a speed build on this. The lot itself is 10,000 simoleons for the build, but then the cost of the land didn't apply. I've used a lot of debug items to have terrain on our property, but it's basically intended to be a farm. The first generation are peasants. There's some, I did go through all the rules when I did the speed build, but basically the Sims, it says they shouldn't try in school. You're not allowed to have your kids try in school. I've actually created holidays for every single day of the week that are stay-at-home holidays. So unlike in Runaway Teen where you're constantly having to sort of stop your teenager from running off to school when you don't want them to, hopefully – I'm hoping this will work as an approach. They just won't go and I won't have to worry about it because the kids should not be attending school. We have – our main character is Olivia Whitlock. I wanted to start with a female sim, but I figured in these kind of medieval times, it wasn't particularly realistic to have a young adult female sim living on her own. So what I've done is I've made her as a teen. She lives with her dad, who is an elder, and his dog, who is also an elder. So the idea is that he's desperately going to try and get her married because he's going to die soon. So he wants her to find her a good man, good husband, get her married so that she is secure and safe and well looked after when he's gone. Because these these are the days of, you know, rampant sexism, I guess, you know, you know how it was. <laughs> like, she can't be a rugged, independent woman. The only women who can do that are widows. So I've spent a lot of time creating this world. There are no lots in this world that are not medieval build lots. Not that you can see much of anything from here. But if I zoom up, there's like a little town square over here. I've got somewhere. It's funny. I can't see the rest of the neighborhood. We've got a little farm over there. And in the distance, I think that's a farm and that's the widow's house. There is actually a widow living on the island. So there's four houses on the island or three houses and a kind of little village. See, no school peasant has no holidays. The only consequence I have found of this setup so far is the Sims do like to blow trumpets because in their mind it's a holiday, so all of the holiday interactions become available. Anyway, it's fine. This is Olivia. She is a teen. Like I said, I have lifespan set to long, so I've got about a week and a half. The only thing in her inventory is poop from the dog from when I was setting all this up. And she loves the outdoors and is self-assured. I figured she's going to spend her entire life farming, so, you know. Uh, in terms of her clothes, there's some CC, some non-CC. I've tried to make everything look brown because I figured they wouldn't have had access to dyes and things, so it would have been raw materials because these guys are peasants. So this is David Whitlock. He is a former knight who used to serve in one of the royal families, not the Windenburg royal family, but a different kingdom, and... He got injured and was not pleased at the way that his kingdom was going, so he actually moved himself and his daughter to Winnenberg, so they don't know anybody. Now, the problem we've got is we have 90 simoleons. There was one set of food in the fridge, like I made one family garden salad meal when I was, I think it was when I was taking the photos of the speed build, honestly, because I did have to move these guys in. And... I had to look after their needs just to kind of get us started. But that's it. We don't have any seeds. We don't have insects. We don't have anything. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do in this part is I need to get seeds, but we don't have a phone. So we're going to have to travel to market. That's the theory. Now, what I've done with this lot is I've tried to make ev like everything in here is off the grid an off-the-grid item, and I've tried to go for things that fit. The challenge says to buy the cheapest items. This fridge is not the cheapest, and I'm not sure if these beds are either, but I wanted to find things that fit, and I think the cheapest bed I have is inflatable. <laughs> so I'm more about the aesthetic. So what we're going to do 
He's also gloomy. I should tell you his traits as well, although I sadly don't anticipate him being around long. Uh, can I have you get leftovers? So David is, he's gloomy, good and family oriented. And I've put him on the successful lineage aspiration. She's on freelance botanist. Now, the way this challenge, the way the rules work, if you want it, there'll be a link in the description to the rules. The way it works is to get a bonus when you're starting your next generation, there's like a bonus challenge to do in the previous generation. So for this generation, our bonus is complete freelance botanist because we're farmers. So that's the goal. She needs to complete the freelance botanist aspiration. I know I just did that in my asylum challenge. And honestly, I wouldn't have if I'd known that I was going to start this challenge, but I didn't. I hadn't decided at the time. Now, one of the rules that I don't actually think is part of the medieval challenge but I think I read in the decades challenge and I think is appropriate is that only men can vote for neighborhood action plans. Now he's got 20 influence points. Let's go vote David. Cause only men folk have the vote. Women folk don't have the vote. So she can accumulate all the influence points in the world, although she has none and she can't use them basically, which is a shame. Oh, buddy. This is Merlin. He is the former uh, warhound. <laughs> he's gotten a bit skinny in his old age, but he's a former warhound. Okay. Rough housing encouraged. I didn't vote that in. Maybe we live in a rough neighborhood. I don't know. But when I recorded my McKinema called Jane, I did it in this world. And because a bit of time passed, the game has given us a thing. So I will try and get rid of that later. We don't want sharing as caring. That's a problem. Now, a lot of these are not actually going to be applicable. Maybe I should vote for back to the old days. Those who live a wholesome lifestyle will be rewarded and those who indulge in technology, drinking juice and woohoo will be fined. That's kind of funny. We're going to give that a little vote. Honestly, our vote's probably not going to make a difference. What will be annoying is if we start getting fined for not playing enough computer games or something. That would actually really suck. Now, once Olivia has finished the washing, we're going to travel to the market because the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a planter box to buy the seeds from. And there are some of those around. Buddy, really? I mean, I like that you took yourself outside, but right next to the door, you could have... Okay, he's he's a little sweetie. Right, I think his traits were loyal and honestly, I can't remember what else. We'll just take him for a walk and get him out of the house. Okay, they should have been friends anyway. It's his loyal hound. She's almost done. Yep. Gosh, you've made a mess. So I'm going to have Olivia catch the ferry across to the main... I think. Actually, I'll see if there's... I can't remember if I... Hang that on the clothesline. I can't remember if I put pots and stuff in the nearby village. So we'll go there first. Now, how do I get there again? I'm going to walk her down here. And then I'll load the lot when I get there. Because you never know, we might be able to, like... Why oh, are you running, Ellie? It's a heat wave today. Calm down. So she's setting out. I'm just going to keep an eye out for like plants, like harvestables and stuff, because there might actually have been some stuff spawned by now, given that, no, ignore that postman, given that I did use this world for that video that I recorded. Oh, there's a thing we can dig up there. So grab that real quick and we can harvest all on these bluebells. Now, obviously, I can't stop The Sims 4, not that I, I know of a way. I don't know of a way to stop The Sims 4 from generating new townies. But my plan is I'll go in and edit them periodically. So I'll go in and, like, kind of change their costumes to be more appropriate. The problem that we're going to have is I can't do things like change the post office, you know, yeah. postman to wear something more historically appropriate because those are like hard coded as far as I'm aware. So yeah, we're kind of just stuck with that, honestly, but that's all right. We'll make do. I mean, if I wanted a true medieval simulator, I would not be playing The Sims. Oh, blackberries. Let's harvest those as well. So we've got blackberries and bluebells. That's a good start. 
and we've got another thing we can dig over here. So we've collected some like minerals and things that we can sell. We've got a frog, a fossil rock. I'll extract that. What do we get? Time capsules are a bit of a problem because they're not super authentic <laughs> and there's nothing in them that if I open it would be worth like that I could argue fit into my game. So I will just actually just sell that. We're just going to pretend that she just found some old footlocker or something. Now, did I put a flower? There's one of these upright ones. I don't actually think I put a pot anywhere in the village, which is a little bit annoying. So we're going to have to take the ferry. So I will see you guys when we get to the market. Okay, so we've arrived at the medieval market. If you have watched Jane, you may or may not remember this bar because that's where I had some of the... See, look, we have Sims in costume. So exciting. So here we go. Come over here. We're going to purchase seeds. Now, because we have to make money from gardening as our primary income source, what I'm going to do is do flower arranging because I thought that would be an interesting, instead of just having a big orchard full of stuff. Now, we've got 160 simoleons. What I'm going to do is buy some starter fruits and some starter flowers. And I guess we'll get a packet of herbs as well. I realize this is using most of our money. But I want the kind of edibles for them. And the idea is that the flowers will be more... Oh, I can't afford a second packet of flowers yet. Oh, I thought I could put a frog in there. I was going to have her try and use the table. Apparently I can't. Maybe because this is technically... Is this a bar lot? I thought it was. All right. Who have we got here? You may remember Elle Faber. <laughs> She's had a little bit of a makeover. Her name's Eleanor. She is still a sage though. I did keep some... Of, I did keep the sages in the game. Pretty much everyone else is gone. And I think I gave her a makeover as well. Quite honestly, I don't remember. But is there a toilet somewhere on this lot? The problem is that they're all very authentic. Oh, there he is. It's over here. A lot of these I downloaded from the gallery by searching for words like medieval or Tudor, depending on the sort of relative wealth. Hi. Hi, I'm new in town. Excuse me, I'll be back. Creepy white lady. <laughs> she is so pale. I didn't change that, you guys. I literally just changed her hair color to make it more natural and changed her makeup. The rest of her stuff is the same. I thought I would be able to put things in the inventory. Never mind, it's fine. I might have to sell things just from her inventory for now. I do want to have her get a crafting table, like a sales table of her own. I just want to stock up on plants while we're here because it was such a long ferry ride to get here, you know. You know how it is. I might keep the frog actually because we can breed those. So we'll get some more flowers, another lot of fruits, and maybe another lot of vegetables. It's a lot of seeds, I know. But I figured she's come all the way in. She's bought some seeds. She probably would want to go in here and, you know, view the Bible, because I suspect whatever the religion is that they have in this world, she would definitely be a believer. She's just moved into Winnenberg, the kingdom of Winnenberg, with her dad. She kind of, as much as anything, maybe wanted to see if the faith here looked to be the same as the one she was familiar with from her old kingdom. Oh, hello. Good morning, sir. <laughs> say hi or good afternoon, sir. Stop trying to talk to Eleanor. She's kind of creepy. We're saying good morning. Just to be polite. And then I'm going to have her head home. You don't want to be talking to a strange man when your father's not around. See, we've got all kinds of people. Oh, he's got no shirt on. He is actually one of my sims. He's just jogging without a shirt on. I was not anticipating that. When I was thinking about working out, I was thinking more like um, push-ups and stuff in the home. I wasn't thinking jogging outfits. Well, probably got a few sims running around naked, but I, he's obviously very self-confident and that's lovely for him. All right, so Olivia's just arrived home and we're going to tell her dad about the trip into the village, we're going to high school. Let's tell him a dramatic story about the lady that we saw with the all white skin and the red hair. And then 
we're going to open all these sea packets and talk to him about what we were able to find. Now, he's not a farmer by trade, obviously. I feel like he was from a farming background maybe before he became a knight. But he does know the basics of farming. I mean, he has no gardening skill, so it can't be a ton. <laughs> but he knows a little bit. He knows enough, you know, you put this thing in the ground and it grows kind of thing. Now, let's see what else we got. We're going to open the seed packets. I'm going to choose to ignore historical accuracy of bananas and potatoes and stuff, just so you know. If I get it, I can plant it, especially if I can eat it. So let's see. As far as flowers go, we have bluebells and daisies. And everything else we have is a vegetable of some kind. Now, I'm thinking we'll plant the flowers near the house. And maybe over here we'll do, like, an orchard and stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out some garden beds and stuff real quick. And I'll get back to you guys when it's set up. Okay, so they've spent some time, like, tilling the land and laying out where they want everything. Uh, who are you talking to? He ain't there no more, girly. So they're now going to plant all of their vegetables. Because this is a tiny lot, we do have the kind of bonuses from that. I've never played with a tiny lot before, but I think we maybe get some gardening bonuses. I'm not sure. We'll see how we go. It's going to be quite a lot of work to tend. Oh, the other thing I downloaded, you guys, was I got the chicken coop mod. So I'm really excited to try that. Well, I have little chickens. I don't exactly how know how it works, but I think you can make money from eggs. Now, I was going to talk about taxes. One of the options, they suggest either using money cheats to reduce your funds or throwing away 50% of your produce. The way I've seen For the Love of Sims do it is she is giving, I think, gifts of money once a week. Like she goes to the castle once a week and gives a gift of money of simoleons to a member of the royal household and that is her payment of taxes. I feel like I kind of like that idea better. So I'm thinking we started on a Friday. I'll have to try and remember every Friday. What I might do is I put it in the calendar as like modify the name of the holiday. So it's like pay your taxes, peasants. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it on a Saturday because if they earn their money all through the week, then on a Saturday they can go pay their taxes. I think that works. We'll do that. So I might, it'll probably be a man that will do it, whether it's her dad or her husband down the track or a male child. I'm not sure that she'd be super keen or it would be particularly socially acceptable for a peasant woman to rock up to the palace. But on the other hand, maybe it's fine if you're showing up with bags of money. That's probably okay. Now, how are you going? You've got the much bigger task. <laughs> Look at Merlin. He's such a good boy. He just follows his owner around. I love that. He's such a beautiful dog. I'm going to be really sad. Yep. It's going to happen. He is an elder. It's going to make me cry, but that's okay. I already love him. Now, if you're almost done, I'm going to get you to start watering. And maybe then you can go help your dad finish with the veg. Although we do need to cook. One of the rules that they had in the Surviving Strangerville Challenge was that you could only cook things that you had the ingredients for. I don't know if that's a thing we should look at doing. So, for example, if I say cook, we have fruit, so we can make fruit salad. We don't have tomatoes, so we can't make garden salad. Do you see what I mean? Like, problem is that we'd be living on fruit salad for now, and I'll probably get crickets. <laughs> So we can cook popcorn crickets. Yum, yum. So I like the idea. I'm going to try and do that. And it's also a good way to save money, honestly. Merlin, you need to move your butt because you're kind of in my way. Can you use tarot root to actually cook anything useful? I'm not sure you can. We'll unload the laundry and then I might have her start preparing dinner because it is almost dinner time. And... Then I think, hey Merlin, good boy, typical dog, he's the only go in the kitchen, decides that that's the place to be. Sounds a lot like my dogs, honestly. We don't really have anything to do for fun on this lot, honestly, except a bubble bath or play with a dog or something. It's something we'll work up to. All right, let's cook. Now, I don't think she has any cooking skill. Nope, not a jot. So we will make a single fruit or a family size fruit salad. Learning to cook, it's hard, Olivia. 
I'm wondering if in the old kingdom, because she's made it to being a teenager without knowing how to cook, which I feel was probably quite rare, for especially for a girl child. So maybe in the old kingdom that they came from, they actually had, you know, people to do these things because her dad was a knight. And then obviously when they've had to leave, they've, they've lost everything. So they really are starting from scratch. You've done a great job, buddy. Just plant these last few things. Oh, you might need to go to the toilet before that, actually. Maybe our dogs won't eat fruit, will they? Just lying on the ground. They might. All right, I'm going to get him to eat. Oh, poor quality fruit salad. Nothing better, am I right? So I'll get him to eat, and then once she's done eating, maybe she can go out and finish. Just because she's got more energy than him, obviously. You know, he's old and injured, so... He's got his arm in a bandage because, you know, he took an injury and all the face scars and stuff. He's had a bad life, has poor David, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to make it better. Do you want me to put that away for you? I'll put that away for you. You're so kind. All right. Why don't you sit down and then when you're done, you can clean up. Olivia's gardening level three already. Is that the tiny home trait thing, maybe? I feel like... She's getting a bonus because she's got little thingies all around her head. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I do like it. I think this could be quite a nice farm by the time we're done. Although I may have put this too close to the house because if it does expand... Hmm, actually, that's another thing I should mention. The maximum number of rooms we're allowed to have in our peasant hovel is three. So when I say expand, we might expand out a bit to have a room for the parents and then the kids will sleep in the main room. Oh, and we have to have five children. <laughs> so five children and two parents in a peasant hovel with three rooms. And one of those is the bathroom. It's going to be awesome. I'm actually really excited about it because The Sims 4 can be quite straightforward to play. <laughs> and it's quite easy to make money. I like the kind of additional challenges, the limits being imposed. Oh, look, he's come out to check on her. Oh, he wants to play. Sorry, buddy. Maybe you could get your daddy to play with you because she's busy. Oh, he's so, such a sweetie. Right, we'll brush him as well and talk to him and praise him for being a good boy because he is clearly the best boy of all time. He probably doesn't understand why everything's changed too. I don't actually think I made this an off-the-grid lot although everything is off the grid. Let's just see. It looks like it's not. Yeah, I don't think it is an off the grid lot. So we will get bills. I figure that's another way the taxes will be applied. That's like the land tax, I guess. Uh, obviously, we can't have solar panels. We can't have windmills or any of that because it wouldn't have happened back in medieval times. And even if they did exist, if this were a medieval fantasy world with windmills, then these guys wouldn't be able to afford anything. There is also a fishing spot just down here. So there's an option to supplement our income that way, which would be good. He can go dig as well. And then I'm actually going to get him to go to bed. They did have a very early start. And I figure because they were using candles that are consumable items, you kind of don't keep a candle lit more than you have to. So, yeah, they definitely would be having an early night all right well i'm actually gonna end this part here i think in the next part we might have to go visit some of the neighbors now that we've got the farm established we might visit some of the neighbors because obviously david's main agenda item is to find his daughter oh my gosh look he's like a third of the way through more than a third of the way through his elder lifespan already oh my god uh yeah we got to get cracking on the finding her husband thing so, because he really, really would like her to be safely married before he dies. And I feel like we're running out of time. I've wasted a bunch of his life by using this safe file for other things, which was probably a mistake. I'm sorry, David. It's okay. You can go to bed as soon as you, as soon as you dig that thing up, buddy. I shouldn't have done this. I should have just had him go to bed. So sad. All right. I'm going to end this part here, you guys. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. You know the drill. 
leave comments if you have any suggestions or if you have any sims that you you know think i should download into the world i'm happy to add more appropriately themed sims that'd be awesome i will catch you next time thanks for watching